Hi, welcome to Insights from Practitioners. And in today's session, I'm delighted to be able to interview Dr. Lisa Morton. Hi, welcome, Lisa. Hi. So Dr. Morton is a counselling psychologist in independent practice. Lisa, could you tell us a bit more about your working role? Sure. Um, hi, Nicola. So, and everyone that's watching, I'm a chartered and registered counselling psychologist, and I currently work in independent practice. So I'm based at one Allen Park wellbeing clinic through in Stirling, although for the last um, six plus months, I've been working mainly online and um, by telephone due to the, the COVID pandemic. And I set up my own um, independent practice about five years ago. And prior to that, I worked in the NHS for about 11 years. Thank you, Lisa. Can you tell us what is a typical day like in independent practice? Sure. Um, so, like I said, I have my one-to-one -one work with clients and I see a range of adults with mental health difficulties um, and life issues. So, most commonly anxiety, um, low mood, panic attacks, OCD, um, loss and grief um, in all of its, its different manifestations. Um, low self-esteem, um, also things like relationship breakups or relationship difficulties and trauma. And my approach with clients is mainly grounded within um, cognitive behavioural therapy, although I do draw on a range of other techniques and approaches. And in addition to the one-to-one the -one work that I'll do with clients, um, I also have to respond to any new inquiries that I get, which is usually by email. And normally what I do is um, set up a brief free telephone chat um, where I listen to um, them and kind of people will explain what they're looking for and I'll answer their questions and if it's suitable I'll set up an assessment appointment with them. I also sometimes need to contact um, my clients GPs um, and maybe write reports for their GP or allied health professionals that are involved in their care perhaps and there are lots of other administrative parts to the role as well. So um, because it's an independent practice, um, I have to do kind of promotional work. So um, I do quite a lot of that via social media. Uh, so it's just kind of keeping that and um, keeping people engaged with that um, and, and finding relevant stuff to post. I've also got my own website and I manage that myself as well. So that takes up quite a bit of time uh, and just online directories, just keeping them up to date. There's also things like the, the financial side of it. So keeping my accounts filing my annual tax return, keeping up registrations with like the, the Health and Care Professions Council, the British Psychological Society, um, and likes of the ICO or the Information Commission's Office, who you have to register with if you hold um, like patient information. So, um, and then there's things like um, client contracts, um, they all have to be um, up to date with GDPR legislation. So just kind of keeping all of that side of things up to date as well. So the kind of behind the scenes admin work takes up quite a bit of time. Mm. I also supervise. So I supervise both fully qualified psychologists and I have a few trainees from the Glasgow Caledonian Doctorate. So in addition to providing supervision with to them, um, which also has a bit more of a training role as well. Um, so kind of working with them in more of a sort of teaching role rather than just kind of the sort of supervision you would maybe do with a qualified practitioner. There's also mid and end of placement reports that I need to complete for them too. Um, and also training um, that, that I attend at Glasgow Caledonian to keep me up to date. So that's very busy indeed. And aspect what would you say is the most challenging <laughs> aspect of the role? Um, well, I mean, it, it can be challenging working with people who are obviously, um, you know, when they're very distressed um, and upset and, and often having to hear about very traumatic experiences that people have been through and um, you feel a lot of empathy for people and, and that can be, can be distressing at times and challenging. What would you say are perhaps the most rewarding aspects of the role? I think it, you know it's a privilege to to hear people's stories and to work so closely with people, um, and then to trust you um, with their vulnerability, and to see um, them improve and um, you know get more out of life and become empowered, and, and that's always 
you know, amazing to witness. I also like having um, a flexible job and I guess what you maybe call it a bit of a portfolio career because that enables me to maintain a, a healthy work-life balance. Thank you, Lisa. And for our psychology graduates who are keen on pursuing a career as a practitioner psychologist or indeed go on to counselling psychology, any advice that you can offer? Um, I'd just say if you want to be a practitioner um, psychologist, absolutely go for it. Um, it is very competitive, but I think that just keep, your, keep an open mind about the different opportunities that present themselves to you. Counselling psychology is a growing profession and um, you know, I'd absolutely encourage you to explore that as another option. Dr Lisa Morton, thank you so much for your time today and we'll look thank forward you. to welcoming Dr Morton who'll be involved with teaching later in the course. <laughs> thank Thanks you. Thanks again. Bye Lisa.